Welcome back. A team led by the World Health Organization has visited a seafood market in Wuhan, China, where COVID-19 was first detected. The market has long been closed to the public. The WHO team plans to conduct two weeks of field work there as part of their investigation into the origins of the virus. They've also visited two hospitals that treated the most severely ill patients. More than a year after that initial outbreak in Wuhan, many people there are still grieving the loss of loved ones. For some, that grief has turned to anger as they question why the government did not do more to address the situation from the very beginning. CNN's David Culver reports now from Wuhan. So this right here is, is the photo. Matching the photo on his phone with this Wuhan park where he last spent time with his father, Zhang Hai can barely keep it together. Just give him a second. Zhang says his father served in China's military, defending his country. But as COVID-19 spread in Wuhan, the epicenter of the global outbreak early last year, weeks passed before health officials publicly acknowledged human-to-human -human transmission. When they finally did, it led to the city of 11 million residents locking down. But by then, Zhang's 76-year-old father had contracted the virus, dying days later. You told me that when you're here, a few emotions come to mind. Obviously, sadness and sorrow and missing your dad, but also anger. With whom are you angry? When the virus appeared in Wuhan in the early days, the local governments of Wuhan City and Hubei province could truly have put people and life first. They could have taken measures to control the virus, he says, but they didn't. Instead, they covered up and missed the precious opportunity. Government figures state nearly 4,000 people in the city of Wuhan have died from COVID-19. Zhang is now suing local officials and the hospital that treated his father. He is not the only one channeling his grief into action. In the back room of a quiet Wuhan tea house, we met Wang Lushen. She packed envelopes addressed to China's high court. Her brother worked as a driver for a local market and was infected January of last year. She considers him a frontline worker, but she says the local government declined her family's claim for work injury compensation. He felt that he would leave financial burdens behind, Wang tells me. I want to negotiate for proper compensation in exchange for his death so that I can take care of his child and family, pay the mortgage and shoulder other responsibilities he couldn't complete. Wang's efforts to persuade China's high court to help unlikely to change anything given the courts declined to take up any COVID-related cases. For young men, it's not even about the money, but what she calls spiritual justice for her daughter. What is the truth as you know it? The local officials did not tell us about the pandemic, she says. If measures were taken, I would not have sent my child to the hospital, which was the source of the infection. Last January, Young's 24-year-old daughter had been receiving treatment for cancer. She contracted COVID-19. Young said the hospital was so overcrowded that she snuck in to attend to her own daughter. I couldn't bear it anymore, so I disguised myself in a set of blue surgery garbs that one of my doctor friends gave me, and I went into the hospital, she says. I blended in to take care of my child. Young says she also contracted the virus. And while she was recovering, her daughter passed away. Young says her husband, whose brother also died from the virus, nearly drove off a bridge. He wanted to take his own life. Following the outbreak in Wuhan, several local and provincial leaders were ousted from their jobs. But Yang wants to see more done. I think the government officials who covered it up need to be punished, not just disciplined, she tells me. My question is, why is it that those who have killed so many are not punished? If there's no explanation, there is no justice. China's foreign ministry has said as recently as last month that accusations that the country covered up the outbreak are simply groundless. CNN reached out to local and provincial court officials for comment. They have not yet responded. <laughs> These grieving <laughs> family members believe local <laughs> officials should have done more, and they are now knowingly risking their own freedoms by sharing their pain publicly. <laughs> Zhang Hai says given all his father sacrificed for his country as an army veteran, he deserves better, even in death.
My father was a patriot, and I am also one, he says. I've always believed it is a patriotic act to speak out. David Culver, CNN, Wuhan, China.